Hello everyone, so welcome to another scroller box unboxing. So I'm just gonna find a scissors so that I can open this. Very well planned ahead. This box feels especially heavy and thick, so I am very curious to find out what's inside. Oh, I see a pencil. So let's start with the featured artist. Oh, that is interesting. It looks like acrylic or oil, but I really hope it is gouache because I would much rather paint with gouache today. So the featured artist of November is Rizzo Chan and here is where you can find them if you want to look at their art, I suppose. I like the very painterly, a bit messy style in the facial part and then the flat colors down here. Then we have two paper sheets with a little bit of a texture, a little bit flimsy. All right, so let's open this. Oh, I love this one. So pretty. Mm -mm -mm. Let's save that for last. Oh, yay! It is squash. I'm so excited. Alright. Yes, I am very childish. The name of the eraser, let's call it K-U-M or Kum, maybe. Let's call it Kum. What the heck is this? What even? Oh, it, it is a... Is it a paintbrush? Oh, it is. But... Oh, all right. <laughs> it is a paintbrush, but it looks a little broken. I'm not sure if it's supposed to look like this, but anyway, you can still use it as a paintbrush, so I don't really care. So we have a number six Van Gogh paintbrush, a round one. So yeah, a portable little brush, very cute. Also, this Kum eraser is a natural eraser, so that is pretty fun. And the two paper sheets are Bockingford CP watercolor paper, 220 GSM. And the treat for this month box is a wrapped little candy. And our 7 million scrawler box graphite pencil is a Lyra Robinson free B pencil. And lastly, we have our scrawler box exclusive Dale Rowney Aquafine gouache set. Oh, that is interesting. They even got their own little slots in there so that they won't move around in the box. Why won't you come out? Maybe from the other way. Yay! So we have Portrait Pink, Alizarin Crimson, Cadmium Yellow, Cobalt Blue, Ivory Black, and Titanium White. Oh, and I almost forgot the Scrawler Challenge, which is Face of Emotion. Oh, that is interesting. Well, maybe I can make this into my annual self-portrait. That would be fun. But first, let's swatch these gouache colors and the graphite pencil. Oh, we have a graphite pencil. That looks like a graphite pencil. Good on you, graphite pencil. Also, let's try out the Kum eraser. Oh, it is dusty. Mm, and it smells like burnt rubber. Yeah, let's just put these directly on the paper. And I can smudge them out with a brush. So for you who don't know, gouache is kind of like watercolors, but it is a little more thick and opaque. So you can actually layer lighter colors on top of darker ones, which you can't really do with watercolors. Oh, this is a very soft paintbrush. So with gouache, you can use them directly from the tube and you will get a very thick, opaque consistency, but the more water you add to it, the more translucent it will become, which is maybe kind of obvious. I really love the creaminess of the paints. Oops, I lost my paintbrush. Ugh. Wow, it is supposed to be a watercolor paper, but it doesn't really look like it is liking water at all. It is interesting to see how the colors interact with each other. The colors look very clear and vibrant, which I really love. So yeah, let's get started with the actual painting. Alright, so as usual, I started doing some sketching on my iPad in Procreate. And if you've been here for a while, you may know that I start and sometimes ends each year here on YouTube with a self-portrait. And I share my goals and my thoughts for the new year. And it is just a fun thing to see how my style has changed or developed over the years. And how I see myself and stuff like that. Last year was such a mess. It wasn't all 
little bad, of course, it had its good times too, but it was such an emotional roller coaster for me. So I wanted to show that in this self portrait in a bit of a psychedelic fashion. I made a happy version and a sad version of myself, and I had them kind of blend or merge together. I don't know why I wanted to challenge myself to draw two portraits in the same painting, but I guess it is just good practice. Also, yes, I did switch to my own paintbrushes. This Van Gogh brush was way too soft for my taste, and it was also a bit uncomfortable to hold. The handle is very, very thin, and it did actually split a couple of times while I was holding it, so yeah, not the best paintbrush in my opinion. So I have used gouache quite a bit, but I am still pretty new to it. I find it a bit tricky to work with since it reminds me a lot of acrylic paint in the consistency, but it behaves like watercolors and sometimes I forget about that and I treat it like acrylic when I try to layer it and then I get reminded that it is actually a watercolor medium that I'm working with when the paints reactivate itself and blends together. I think I will have to try acrylic gouache, I believe it dries permanent so it won't reactivate itself when layering it but gouache is such a lovely medium to work with and I love the matte finish once it dries so I don't really mind to practice some more with it I have never made something realistic looking with gouache before, so I didn't really know how to approach this portrait, but I made a base by watering down the paint to a watercolor consistency to kind of plan out the colors, and then I went in with more opaque paint layers. I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing, I am just playing around with the paint to get a feeling for it. I used the featured artist print as inspiration, I really like the painterly style where the different paint layers are visible and not blended or smoothed out, so I tried to do something similar in my own portrait, I don't know if it is working or not, so I'm just basically splotching on the paint to see what's working. and. Gosh, this gouache is so smooth and nice to work with. So as I mentioned before, I use these self-portrait videos to kind of reflect a little over last year and my goals and my thoughts for this year. Also, let me know down in the comments below if you have any goals for this year, do you have any dreams that you want to pursue? Setting up goals for yourself, it doesn't really have to be super big things, just things to strive for that will make your life a little easier or richer in any way. Last year, as I mentioned before, was a bit of a struggle for me, and I have talked about this in a previous video, but I did actually lose my job twice last year, and we also lost our sweetest beloved cat, Ludwig, which I'm still not over. I also struggle a lot with my mental health, but yeah, I don't want to dwell on it too much though, but let's just say that I hope this year will be a little better. So yeah, last year was tough and all that, but also good things happen and when one door closes, another one will open. I am determined that this year will be good, since I don't have a job anymore. I am working on starting up my own business, which is something I've been wanting to do for a long time now, and it really took something like losing my job to finally do so. So nothing bad that isn't bringing anything good with it, I guess. I want to see if I can actually live off what I create with my own two hands. This also means that I will finally start selling my art again. I know that a lot of people have asked me if I'm selling prints or if I take commissions, and now that is something I will be able to do again, and I am super excited about that. And another thing that I will be working on this year that has also been a dream of mine is to illustrate a children's book. It is a collaboration between me and my mom, she is writing and I am illustrating. We have no idea if someone will actually take the book, but it is just something that we have to do anyway since we've been talking about it for ages now. And I think that no matter what, it will still be great practice for us and a good experience. 
so at least we will get that. I think that even if things don't go as planned, you can still learn something from that experience. And even if bad things happen, I like to think that it was somehow meant to be and that there is a greater meaning behind it that we don't know about yet. And I know that some people get provoked by that idea, but it gives me a little comfort at least. I'm also hoping to have this channel grow even more this year and I will work hard to make that happen. Same with my art business, I will have to put a lot of hard work into building it and I am ready to do so, but most of all I am hoping to feel some peace and calm. Even if I know I will be busy, I'm hoping to find this inner peace. I know it sounds a bit cheesy, but that is something I'm striving to achieve and I think that is one of the most important things that I will have to work on this year because of my mental health. If my mental health isn't working, then nothing else will work, so yeah, that is very important for all of us. So yeah, that are some of my goals and thoughts for this year. So let's talk a little about this artwork before we end. I am really happy with how this turned out. It isn't perfect, it doesn't exactly look like me, and the skin tone turned out so much darker than I thought. I am a super super pale person in real, but it is like a practice piece. I was a little tired and sloppy when I added the background, and I really didn't like the yellow square that I first made. It was okay for the happy side of the portrait, but the yellow didn't really go along with the feeling I was trying to portray on the sad side. So I tried to fix it by toning down the yellow with a white, but it didn't really work, so I just decided to cut it out and glue it onto a new background. And I think that the yellow and the purple looks really good together. I think the hardest part was to make this sad expression. I rarely draw sad people, so that is something I will have to practice on. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and this painting. I hope that 2020 will bring you a lot of new opportunities and happiness. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats, bye!